Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the flood. Wow, what a surprise! Me talking about the flood? That's never happened before. <laughs> Today I want to talk about the flood, both their presence in Halo Infinite's campaign and also the future of them after Halo Infinite's story because there's some stuff in this game that kind of alludes to them that in some cases is literally them and it's got me thinking about the future, so I thought today would be the perfect day for that. So, firstly, the biggest Flood reference in this game, if you haven't seen it yet, is this Silex here. Now, if you want to go and see it, it's below where Tremonius comes down when you fight him. Below his elevator, you just go through this door, through this little hallway, and here it is. This massive Silex in the middle of this huge cavernous room. And this is what I want to talk about first, because obviously it's the biggest hint at the Flood in this entire game. So, firstly, the actual placement of this Silex is obviously very different to all of the other Silexes that we see. All the others are stored in large quantities and in some cases in rooms with other species Silexers, like this room we have Jekyll Silexers and Human Silexers and Grunt Silexers all side by side, whereas this one is very clearly separated. It's in its own entire room, which by the way is an incredibly vast and rather imposing room that even plays like a little easter egg music cue when you walk in by the way. And also, the ring system seem to be kind of perpetually scanning or maybe even locking down the Silex in this room, which again is not the case for all the other Silexes that we see. I think it's pretty clear, like merely from the presentation of this Silex and the room that it's in, that it's something special. Now, when I first found this, I found this on my second playthrough. Uh, ages ago now and I, I was kind of confused at first right so when I first saw it I was like hang on <laughs> that looks a little bit like the primordial but it couldn't be the primordial because he's long long dead was put in a time capsule and accelerated by like hundreds of thousands of years he's long gone he ain't coming back right and then I spoke to Halo Cannon and he was like hmm it kind of looks like a drone queen and I was like yeah it does look a bit like a Yan Mei queen but why would they have a drone queen locked down like this? This isn't the kind of quarantine protocols that I would expect a ring to make for a, a drone queen. But then I realized that I was interpreting the blueprint on the front of this Silex as if it was from a top-down perspective, whereas all the other Silexes, their blueprints are from a front-on perspective. And from front-on, this is so clearly an infection form. You can see you've got the big abdomen here, you have the sensory appendages like the main tentacles here, and then you also have the smaller leg tentacles here. This symbol is so clearly an infection form, I can't unsee it now. So that begs the question, why did the foreigners store flood in this Silex? We've seen them in previous games stored in like tanks or containment tubes or whatever. Weren't Silexers just meant for species that were going to be reseeded after the Halos were fired? Well, I imagine Silexers were where they were stored to be protected from not only the firing of the array, but any species who may visit the Halo installations and start toying around with them and breaking into certain facilities like the Covenant did in Halo 1 and fraying the Flood. I assume they were stored in Silexers to prevent that from happening. If the foreigners just stored all the flood specimens that they saved in like tubes like the tank on cold storage then I mean any species could come and just blow them open or brute force into them and free the flood again like the like the covenant did in Halo 1. But to open a Silex requires a reclaimer. Not even the Banish could brute force their way into the Harbinger Silex to get her out and I would assume that they tried at some point. They had to get Lucas Browning to come and open it. And actually this got me thinking. Maybe when it was said years ago, I think Catalog said it, that there were 10 inactive proto grave mines on Zeta Halo, I always interpreted that as meaning as like literally on the surface of the Halo, there were 10 proto grave mines just kind of chilling out on the ring. But maybe that isn't what it meant. Maybe it meant that there were grave mines or proto grave mines stored in silexers in the underbelly of the Halo. That'd certainly explain why they were inactive. And also, if this is the case, then the Joint Human and Swords of Sanghelios task force didn't purge them from the Halo like we thought they did in 2558, because they weren't on the surface. They were probably in Silexers in the underbelly of the Halo, where I'm assuming they didn't go. Of course, that's just a theory. There's a chance that maybe they were just on the surface of the ring, and maybe the swords of Sanghelio just glassed them off the ring and completely wiped them out. You never know, but given that the Flood are clearly stored in Silexers, it would explain why Catalog said those proto-grave mines were inactive. 
Going back to the Silex though, I find the location of this kind of containment room that it's in really interesting as well. So in Halo Point of Light, a book that came out earlier this year, which was set on Zeta Halo mind you, before it sustained any significant damage from Cortana, Guilty Spark, or I guess Chakas now, says that he doesn't believe any flood specimens that might still exist in substructure research facilities, presumably like this one that we see on Foundation, pose any threat, and I assume that's because they're stored in silexes. However, it's later revealed that substructures were still damaged from the Foreign Flood War, and some of them were even lacking power. Now, if a room like this lost power, then I would assume that the ring systems or whatever would stop scanning and or locking down the silex, which would leave it pretty open and vulnerable to a containment breach. One, mind you, that would likely go undetected as well. So perhaps somewhere else on Zeta Hilo, there's a Silex just like this in a room just like this that's unmonitored by the Halo that's falling into disrepair and is just waiting to be the source of an outbreak. I don't know, but uh, certainly some food for thought. Now, pivoting away from this Silex for a moment, I want to talk about the Flood and their potential place in the future of Halo Infinite's narrative because there are some rather interesting references to them in the story. Of course, there's that bit where Despondent Pyre thinks that Cortana has come to Zeta Halo to free the Flood, when in fact she came for the Endless, I assume, which is a bit of dialogue that, honestly, I can't help but think is maybe a slight reference to all the Logic Plague theories after Halo 5. And then, of course, there's the Harbinger, one-to-one -one quoting the Gravemind, could be a coincidence, could hint at something larger, right now we have no idea. But one of the biggest things is the fact that the Endless are immune to the effect of the Halos and, by extension, should also be immune to Flood Infection as well. The way a Halo's pulse kills is by destroying the nervous system, which is what a creature needs to be infected by the Flood, hence the whole killing the Flood's food thing. Without a nervous system, their bodies can still be used as biomass to build a proto-grave mind or a regular grave mind or whatever, but they can't become hosts to infection forms. We also know from the case of Sergeant Johnson that if a potential host's nervous system is damaged or irregular in any way, the Flood basically don't bother trying to infect them. So where's all of this leading? Well. The Endless are returning, and it's looking as if they might be reclaimers in some capacity as well, or at the very least, they believe they should hold the mantle of responsibility, not humanity. Obviously, this puts humanity at odds with them. They've been detained for almost 100,000 years, but now they're finally free, and they're coming for what they believe is theirs. For what the foreigners denied them, and for what we as a species hold, and... I can assume are not going to give up easily. Based on this, it's looking as if the Endless are going to be humanity's new big bad enemy in the future of the Halo universe, or at least humanity's rival in some capacity, and they also happen to be immune to the Halos, and potentially, by extension, immune to the Flood as well. So, what would be the easiest way for the Endless to come in and just wipe out humanity and claim the mantle for themselves? Well, release the Flood, have them rampage through an already drastically weakened humanity and consume the entire species, fire the Halos without a single worry in the world that you might harm your own species, and just like that, you've wiped the species who have what you so desire off the board for good and claimed it for yourself. Honestly, the more that I think about it, the endless weaponizing the Flood just makes more and more sense. I mean, why wouldn't they? They posed like next to no threat to them. And furthermore, you could actually kind of make a case for the Harbinger having already set these plans in motion as of Halo Infinite's story. So the Flood Silex was in a banished controlled part of the Halo, right beneath one of their biggest outposts on the ring, and right beneath as well, where they took the Harbinger Silex to open it. Maybe the Flood Silex's location is a total coincidence, or... Maybe the Harbinger had them secure it so that she could get her plans in the way, so as soon as she freed the Endless, she could release them and begin her plans to reclaim the mantle. I don't know, it's some food for thought for sure. Either way though, this game has a healthy dose of Flood hints and references, and I know that I'm biased, right? But I am still convinced that at some point down the line, they'll end up being part of the equation. I mean, for Christ's sake, we're on a Zeta Halo. They can't not be. We are on the single best location in the entire Halo, not universe, entire Halo franchise to have the Floodmaker return. It's got to happen at some point. 
But yeah, let me know what you think of both my theories and also this Flood Silex down below in the comments. I'm gonna be honest, I'm kinda kicking myself that I didn't recognize this as Flood at first. I can't believe it took me like, god, two weeks I think to realize that was an infection form? It was staring me right in the face and I didn't realize it. Come on, come on, Luke. That's a, that's that's rookie. That's a rookie error right there. Rookie error. But yeah, I'm gonna round this one out here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this theory. I've missed making Halo theories so much, so so more are definitely on the way. So I want to give a massive thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there, as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.